Once we're going to compare centroid scalar computing, it's much clearer. Because, you know, usually when we say centroid computing system, they mainly have three components. assets in a Bitcoin and all the work which is related to these seven categories. And if you want a deep understanding about my pool flow strategy, please check out my other video about my pool flow strategy. And here's my video link, okay? Then today's AIV matching category, here, number six, bros, and also number two, decent or CDN, and then as an indefinite matching category, number one, DAS. But simply say, AR is a decentralized P2P storage network. So that is why these two points is a critical matching category. Also, they can think about the B2C application solutions. So number one, also another matching color too. Then, as usual, I'm going to apply the six Anaka points to so standing for the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and half cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here. So total score is 30 point, 30. And also, if you want a deeper understanding about my, how I'm going to analyze each point here, please check out my other video about my altcoin investment strategy. And here's my video link, okay? Then here's total score of the AR as of December 2021, 24.5 points. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm not going to get the investment in AIE token AR. But from here, I'm going to tell you the reasons. Okay. Then let's start from here, pain point analysis. First of all, they may have two pain points. And first one, this one. Ethereum only covers transaction system on decentralized cloud yet. First of all, as we know, decentralized color computing system, which means boss market, is the biggest market on the blockchain space. It's pretty big. But the thinking about entire system architecture of the decentralized cloud, here is two missing parts. is analytics engine and a storage system here. Once we're going to compare centralized color computing, it's much clearer. Because, you know, usually when we say cloud computing system, they mainly have three components. Transaction system, storage system, and analytical system. Then usually every single application if we're gonna process, you know, users money transfer or messaging sending or something, they're gonna process by transaction system. Then storage system manage all these transaction data for the each user here. Then once you know those applications wants to use search engine or recommend engine or something, they're gonna use analytical engine here. These three components is a minimal requirement as a decentralized cloud computing system. That is why AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, those major cloud computing systems also have these three components as a minimal level. Okay? But once we're going to go to decentralized cloud, first of all, BOROS means transactional system. Because blockchain technology is a transactional system. It's not for stretch, or it's not for analytical engine here. That is why, in long term, Every single bus player, including L1 or L2, have to scale up their solution to storage area, also another area here. That is why currently we have three major players here, like LW, Sealcoin, Firecoin, this market here. Okay? But at the same time, the key thing I want you to understand here, also bus player here can scale up their technology by themselves. For storage, also another area here. That's why. This pain point itself is not that quite a critical one. The reason is, from the DApps perspective, separately use Bruce Stretch or another engine on the DApps management, it's huge pain points. It's pretty painful. That is why they only want to use single cloud resources to run the applications. So from that perspective, these you know, separate IT solutions in a decentralized cloud is not ideal one. Okay? Then, pain point number two, when do we need decentralized Dropbox in blockchain space? Key point is if those like a decentralized cloud computing integrations with BAS ecosystem, it's not the realistic go to market strategy for the storage solutions on a blockchain space like Aave. They have to think about alternative go to market strategy. Then in this model, currently, decentralized Dropbox is one of the high potential product idea to think about P2P storage business. But this is one key thing I want you to understand here. Dropbox also studied by using AWS. 
That is why currently all P2P storage network player has been seriously struggled to build effective go to market strategy on their solutions. Okay? Then from here, number two, product analysis. The here's the historic background about Airweave. So Airweave was funded in early 2017 by Sam and William. In April 2018, Airweave graduated from Texter Bearing Accelerator. The Airweave has wise total 22 million USD over six funding rounds in total. Then they have made a major two funding round. First one is this one, June 2018. The team raised 8.7 million by ICO backed by Edington XRP Capital. And on December 2019, Airweave secured 30 million led by Andreessen Horowitz and also Union Square Venture, Multi Chain Capital, and Coinbase Venture. Okay? Then next one, the first version of the mainnet was launched on June 8, 2018, with a selected group of 1,800 hand picked participants as a validator on this network. Yeah? Then here is your Airweave system overview. Very similar to the bus. So here's DAPS, then here is the decentralized P2P storage network. They can apply the public blockchain. Also, their consensus algorithm is succinct random proofs of access. That's their definitions. Okay. Then think about you know technical capability of the Airweave. I mainly pointed out two unique features on the technology. First one is this one, block weave. So critical difference compared with blockchain technology on the Airweave. It's this one, block weave. In a blockchain technology, their data structure is a linear directions. Past one, future one. It's directly connected to each other. But from the storage business perspective, this system architecture is not an ideal one. The reason is sometimes DAPS application wants to access to the past history data. That is why much more flexible data structure is super easy to use from the DAPS perspective. So they're gonna apply block weave technology on their data structure. It's kind of similar to the DAG data structure on a distributed computing system. And think about this one, wildfire. This idea probably get the inspiration from the page lab on Google. But the key point is, you know, in a Bitcoin blockchain infrastructure, for example, every single node have to download all the transaction data when they're gonna decide to join blockchain by the network. That is why initial cost to join this network is actually a little bit high. But Airweave doesn't require those rules anymore. Every single node needed to download partial data in the entire infrastructure on an Airweave, which is really, really beneficial for every single validator. It's great. But the thing about the data usability or availability for the DAPS perspective, which is not good. To solve this problem, they gonna apply wildfire. So here, wildfire ensure that miner are selfishly incentivized to store and share data as quickly as possible with other miners in a network in order to build the positive reputations. Simply means those validator they gonna copy other validators' data as much as they could. They can get the higher reputation score. That is why the validator incentives gets higher. It's pretty well designed one. I like it. Okay. So as usual, this is a vertical process analysis. The Airweave here and the most closest competitor is Siacoin and Filecoin. They're also indirect competitor. They also have Helium and Brain. They're from the P2P storage network technical perspective. I think Airweave technology is most advanced one. I like it. But here are the one key critical points every single P2P storage player have to think about is their go to market strategy. So as I told you in paper analysis, you know, every single DApps only use bus solutions. The other item stuff, they're gonna use central scrub directly. So from that perspective, how they're gonna build pretty effective go to market strategy is a critical point to crossing chasm. Alright? Then I currently suppose three major alternative go to market strategy scenario on their business. Number one is here, Helium Hotspot. It's a P2P CDN. Because it's, this approach is pretty scalable one because they are starting from 
network capability resource sharing ecosystem currently established by any kind of hotspot solutions in the market. This is the first one. Second one is integrated with Brave Browser for their IP event solutions. It's another go to market strategy. And the third one, as I told you, fast connections. But again, from the both perspective, if the storage network accept indirect usage for the dApps, so the dApps only need to directly use bus ecosystem, which is you know, completely frictionless. So from that perspective, I think this hidden hotspot approach has the biggest potential about P2P storage network business. Because this is my answer for that question. Because I just think this is the future of the mining. Currently, you know, because of the proof of work system on Bitcoin, most of the users are thinking about these, you know, pretty big data center model is a normal solution for the mining business. But in long term, I think this one will be the much more normal one because of the proof of stake adaptations. Once proof of stake model is much more popular than proof of work model in the bus market, on the blockchain platform market, like the bus market or L1 and L2, we can expect much smaller device is eligible to use as mining solutions. Then from the P2P storage business perspective, we have fresh memory here. As we know, currently, two terabyte US memory is this size here in 2021. Once this fresh memory data here integrated into hotspot hardware and hidden network, we can use those infrastructure itself as P2P storage network. So from that perspective, I still do think that compared with you know, AIB model, Helium network go to market strategy is much more effective way to build decentralized P2P CD network in long term. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Then number three, key analysis. So here's key member here. The mother entity is minimum spanning technologies. Then Sam, co-founder CEO, He's also the mentor at Techstars and he's ex-assistant lecturer at the University of Kent. And he, had the, the, he got the PhD of the computer science at the University of Kent. The second guy, Sebastian, COO, ex-program manager of Techstar, ex-program manager at Techstar Berlin. And he got the MPA at the Healthy School. And Kyle, head of product, ex-developer at the Buhu.com. And he got the BS of the computer engineering at the University of Nottingham. The two CTO guy is actually left their team already. The first guy is this one, William, co-founder and ex-CTO. He's currently working for AI and machine learning really at the uh, Broncos. He's an ex-assistant lecturer at the University of Kent, and he also gets the PhD in computer science at the University of Kent. So both these guys used to work together. Then Jasper, ex-CTO, CPO at the Nokia Spots, ex-senior software engineer at Atlassian. Pretty good software company. Then he got the BS of the computer science at the Hoster Gymnasium. Then plus 20 members, mainly in UK and Germany. Simply say, two CTO departure means there are serious struggle for the gold market strategy. That's the key thing we can learn from here. Okay. Then number four, execution plan analysis. So here is P2P CNO development updates. Currently, we have stats from Theacoin and Filecoin, but no data from AIWE. That's seriously problem. So my expectation for the AIV, like this. For example, Seacoin, they open those you know, traction data on their own. That's what I expect of the AIV too. We can expect that probably AIV has not gained any kind of outside traction with this level yet. That's why they're not gonna open any data. Number five, token economy analysis. So token economy design matrix, which I made, and the major matching category for the AIV, DAPS here, decentralized CDN, and BORS, BORS and OS, okay? This is, at this moment, I cannot recognize any kind of effective network effect model on a AR token yet. So instead, for your reference, I'm gonna share ATMT token network effect model. It's pretty scalable one. So starting point, this one. So internet user who wants to make money on their own home Wi-Fi, so they can get more nodes, so they're gonna get more connectivity, so lower price routing technology is developed, so better customer experiences for you know, internet network resources on their home Wi-Fi. That's gonna bring the P2P Wi-Fi growth at the network. And then they can leverage 
this P2P Wi-Fi gross resources to storage them across because third party manufacturer make Wi-Fi router with storage volume, as I told you in the previous slide, flash memory technology, internet inside Wi-Fi router. So more monetization opportunity for the internet user. So these user, which is much more excited to make money on a free network, so better customer experiences. So this go-to-market strategy to me, much more effective way to build a decentralized P2P storage network. Okay. Then benchmark analysis as of December 2021. Yeah, we have here 1.9 billion and the Tiacoin coin 730 million and the Filecoin 5.0 million and Dropbox is 10 billion. Then think about their technical capability, also traction level. You know, Tia coin, their traction level is much more you know clear here. So from that perspective, AI token AR is a little bit overvalued. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay. Then about governance now, of course it's very critical because you know, their project also close to the Ethereum platform. Okay. Then number six, half cycle analysis. Then major matching category, we got not half cycle analysis, both integrated 221 versions. Major matching category is, of course, blockchain platform, blockchain pros, also decentralized web, decentralized applications as interesting matching category. Okay? So, final item, total score. So, about pain point, 4.5. The reason is, as I told you, BAS has critical market demands. P2P storage network, not that yet. Then, about go to market strategy, of course, you know, Dropbox model has a pretty big potential. But the time itself is not that right. So 4.5. Product level. Compared with other P2P storage network like Thiacoin or Firecoin, I think RMA technology itself is most advanced one. So 4.5. Team level, 4.0. We we'll simply say their technical capability is relatively higher one, but think about you know, go-to-market strategy or business development resources stuff, they are still struggling to build effective model at this moment, so 4.0. Execution power, 3.5. We simply say, there is no traction yet, even they're going to start the project from 2017. It's going to be a little bit problem, so 3.5. Token economy, 4.0. I cannot recognize any kind of effective token economy yet. The reason is, their token economy model is similar to the Ethereum, like any kind of vast project. But about their go to market strategy, there is no in clear traction yet, so 4.0. Hype cycle, 4.0. You know, as a... P2P storage network is gaining slightly over the market momentum all the time. Because, you know, again, decentralized cloud computing system all the time require storage network on their platform completions. So from that perspective, they can gain slightly over the market momentum always, but without any kind of tractions, it's pretty difficult to maintain those traction level. So 4.0. So the total score is 24.5 points. So my minimum investment credit is over 25 points. So from that perspective, I'm not going to recommend investment in Airwave token Air. Okay? Then if you got any kind of questions with this video or any video that I make, please think about to join my premium membership program, live Q&A sessions. So every week, I'm going to hold a live Q&A session with my member. Then there, I can answer you any kind of questions related to this video or any other video that I make. Then of course, I know you're busy. So you can post your question in advance. Then during the live recording sessions, I'm going to answer your questions. Then later, you can check out the recorded video. So for my detail, please check them out at the video. And then here's my video link, okay? All right, so that is all this time. So I'm going to make this video for an educational purpose. So I'm not going to guarantee you any kind of certain level investment outcome with this video or any other video that I make. But I truly hope that my video will probably help you guys understand about high potential about crypto and water space. So I'm going to make a lot of this video on crypto and water space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.